Welcome to another on Enter Flash tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you about friction. That's right. If you watched my last tutorial, I taught you about acceleration. And when you let go of your keyboard button, the item would keep on going. But that's not the real world. In the real world, when something starts going, eventually it slows down. Depending on if it runs out of energy, momentum, all sorts of things. So, what we have here is, when I let go of the keyboard button, my item goes to a gradual stop. And that's because I set friction. Friction is not a complicated thing to do. It's only a few lines of code, and I'm here to show you that. So, let's get into the code. Boy, friction. You know, friction gets hot, if you know what I mean. I set up two layers. One is an AS three layer which will house all our action scripts and I locked it and I also have a content layer where I have my movie clip which I named ball I locked them both and now I'm ready to code by selecting my action script three layer if you watch my last tutorial acceleration it's all the same code so there's nothing new to learn other than the friction so right here is our friction variable that I just created and this is holding how much friction is going on. And I'll explain friction when we get to it. But first, I'm going to quickly explain all of the code. If you don't know what's going on, then go to my previous tutorials where I talk about gaming. Uh, character movement and animation is the first one, and it just moves on from there. There will be a link in my information. Right here, this is where I set my boundaries for the ball. If it goes past a certain point, this is 520, and if it goes uh, beyond 20, then we want them both to reflect and to stay at a specific point. At the top, it's the ball's x-axis will end up at 520, and if it goes out through the other side, or tries to, it'll end up at 20. So that's our boundaries. Now we have our user interaction, which looks for a key being pressed, and when the key is being pressed, it contributes to the speed. It either speeds up or slows down. This set of code here, this if statement, checks to see if the speed is beyond a certain value. And if it is, it resets it to a lower value because we don't want the speed to continue to go super duper fast. All right. Now we have speed multiplied by friction. So what happens now is speed is multiplied by the friction number and reset the speed. Now I can do this easier. I can delete the speed and that and put multiply equal which will essentially do the same thing. So friction is being multiplied and reassigned to speed. Now how does this slow something like this down? Well it's simple math. When you multiply by a decimal it's like dividing. So what will happen is, let's say speed is 100. If I multiply it by 0.9, it will become 90. -a. Let's, you know what? In fact, we can see. Let's trace that out. Let's trace what will happen if we multiply 100 by 0.9. Now 100 would act as if it's the speed. So 100 times point nine. Let's see what that's going to do. Oh, it looks like I'm not that bad in math after all. So if you multiply it by a decimal, then it's going to slow down. So from 100, it goes to 90. And what's basically happening is it just goes to 90% of whatever number, because I'm at point nine. Now I could put 0.85, which will give me slower results. It's all up to you, but as long as you don't go beyond 1. The higher the number, the more time it takes for your item to slow down. So that's friction, or why we multiply it. Now, there is a problem with friction. So after we multiply it and set it, then we set the speed back to ball. But this if statement right here that has to do with friction is what really helps us out. We have this if statement, and it's saying if the math absolute value of speed 
is less than 0 0.009, then speed equals 0. And I explain everything that's going on and why I'm using this math.absolute value. I'm using this because math absolute value doesn't care if your item is positive or negative. It just cares what number is inside of it. So when you're multiplying something, you keep on getting 90%. So what is 90% of 1? 0.9. And what is 90% of 0.9? It just keeps on going and going smaller and smaller and smaller. And even though it goes really small, eventually it doesn't exactly stop. So we want to look for a certain point that when the movie clip, um, when the speed variable is below a certain value, and just numbers wise, we can set it back to zero, whether it being negative or positive. That's why the math.absolute is essential to this. So it checks to see if your item is having numbers less than this. And that's basically it. So let's go over the friction. Friction is multiplied by your speed. And then your speed is set to your balls dot x axis. And if that speed, numbers wise, is below a certain point, then we want to fix it to zero. I'm going to trace out these numbers to show you exactly what's going on in the speed. Right now it's continually tracing out zero. And when I move it, you see that these numbers are huge. And they go back to zero. So you get some, somehow you get it to stop. And that has to do with that math absolute value function. Because it would keep on dividing and dividing, which is a waste of time. And it may keep your movie clip moving. So we don't want that to happen. See, if it's negative, it still goes to zero. And if it's positive, it eventually goes to zero. So that's what that is for. So that's pretty much it, acceleration. If you're confused by any of this, don't worry. You can go to my website, onenterflash.com, where you can download the FLA and try it out for yourself. Thanks for watching this tutorial. If you like these videos, remember to rate, subscribe, comment, and go to my website, onenterflash.com. Click on an attitude and put a few pennies in my pocket. I'll appreciate it. And so will this ball.